Mr. Ayer, you may begin. Yeah, your, your mic. Your mic. mic. Good afternoon, Chairman Nadler, Ranking Member Jordan, and members of the committee. Thank you very much for inviting me to appear today. I was privileged to serve in the Department of Justice under two Republican and one Democratic president, and I am here because I believe that William Barr poses the greatest threat in my lifetime to our rule of law and to public trust in it. That is because he does not believe in its core principle that no person is above the law. Instead, since taking office, he has worked to advance his lifelong conviction that the president should hold virtually <coughs> autocratic powers. That includes immunity from nearly all checks and balances and being able to accord special treatment to himself and his friends. The system that Barr is working to tear down was put in place in the aftermath of the Watergate scandals, which involved extensive government corruption and caused a widespread loss of trust. After Nixon resigned, President Ford's Attorney General Edward Levy acted swiftly to restore trust by supporting reforms to prevent such abuses. These included statutes like FISA, the First Inspector General Act, expansion of FOIA, and the Whistleblower Protection Act. Levy knew that public trust ultimately depended on people believing that ours is a government of laws and not men, in which no person is above the law. That had special significance for the Department of Justice, whose work he saw imbued with a judicial nature. Its awesome powers demanded transparent and orderly decision-making processes subject to review at multiple levels and free from improper personal considerations or political interference. Levy emphasized the critical role of a dedicated professional staff who would bring zeal and determination and a great concern for fairness and impartiality. This vision has been an inspiration to generations of department lawyers. Bill Barr's service since last February has been a root and branch attack on Edward Levy's vision and reforms indeed on the very idea that no person is above the law. Barr has sought to give the president nearly unlimited powers by negating or overriding many independent processes that operate as important checks on executive branch action. Here are some of the things that he has done. He has worked to defeat any meaningful oversight either by Congress or by review in the courts through litigation, legal opinions, and his own speeches. He has himself refused multiple times to show up in response to, appear, to requests to appear before Congress. He has worked to undermine Congress's appropriation power by litigating the President's right to divert funds to pay for his border wall, which Congress refused repeatedly to fund. He has regularly undermined the authority of independent decision-making processes and career professionals whose disinterested integrity Levy saw as a key element justifying public trust. He has done this by his own statements, such as last March when he publicly whitewashed the Mueller report's extensive findings on obstruction of justice and last December when he publicly contradicted key conclusions reached by Inspector General Horowitz in his FBI election interference probe. Both times, Barr's intervention vocally reaffirmed positions advanced regularly in presidential tweets. He has also done it by enlisting various political cronies to review and reverse decisions of experienced career attorneys, or by simply replacing them in handling matters of personal interest to the president. This is how he accomplished the reversals of long-held department positions in the cases of Trump associates Roger Stone and Michael Flynn, urging a much lighter sentence in one case and outright dismissal in the other. In a number of other matters, such as the intake of information from Rudy Giuliani and investigation of unmasking requests during the Obama administration, Barr has set aside certain subject matter to be handled by people in his, inner, in his political inner circle rather than by career officials who would deal with them in ordinary course. Finally, Barr has willingly supported removal of officials when their attention to duty proves politically inconvenient to the president. The treatment of U.S. Attorneys Jesse Liu here in the District of Columbia and of Jeffrey Berman in New York last Friday are two blatant examples. So is his standing by and voicing support as Trump during April and May of this year has removed five inspectors general who have long served as, import, as an important check on executive branch corruption. In an ever greater, to an ever greater and quite shocking extent this spring, Barr has used the great powers of the Department of Justice to advance the President's narrow political interests and gravely undermine constitutional rights and the functioning of our democracy. Consider his apparent role in overseeing law enforcement action on June 1 to deny the right of peaceful protest in Lafayette Park or the plainly frivolous motion filed last Friday to deny and denied one day later to enjoin publication of John Bolton's book for disclosing facts embarrassing to the president. Or worst of all, I think, are his flamboyant media discussions 
of the facts supposedly unearthed by the specially commissioned investigation he is personally conducting with the help of U.S. Attorney John Durham. Repeatedly, Barr has echoed the President's tweets and conclusively characterized the FBI investigation of Russian interference as an effort to spy on the Trump campaign and as, as he put it, one of the greatest travesties in American history. And he has hinted repeatedly that indictments are likely. This conduct is a textbook violation of Justice Manual Rule 1-7.400, which bars public comment on criminal investigations before charges are filed. Here, though, the wrong is much worse, as Barr is using a criminal investigation to produce fodder for the President's campaign propaganda mill, which can have its effect even though it is false. If this conduct in particular gives cause for great concern about what Barr may do next. Just one, one, another 30 seconds. In closing, it needs to be said that Bill Barr does regularly lie in ways that impact official action. Along with his continuing media project to make Americans believe that the FBI conspired against Donald Trump, his statements about the Mueller report, Jeffrey Berman's supposed resignation, and Barr's own role in the events in Lafayette Park come quickly to mind. So does his practice of regularly shrouding himself in the rhetoric and trappings of the rule of law, even as he desecrates and undermines the institutions that make it possible. But to me, Barr's crowning dishonesty Gentlemen's is the is portrait expired. of Edward Levy that a recent New York Times article showed hanging on the wall of his conference room as though the current incumbent regular, had regular anything. Order, regular order. The witness will conclude. Regular order is right. We're way beyond regular order. The witness will continue. Can I have one more sentence here? By all means. Okay. But to me, Barr's crowning dishonesty is the portrait of Edward Levy that a Mr. recent Chairman, I would New York ask Times that, they, uh, that the sergeant at arms witness be conclude. called upon to stop the disruption of this meeting. I can't hear this witness. This is a very important witness. witness yeah, well, he's way time. beyond and the chair. Yeah. Has and if the there are no rules about the when people has can the talk, there's no not. rules about when you can make noise. The gentleman makes a, a good chair. point, and the chair will enforce the five-minute rule. Witness will proceed. The chair will is not enforcing the we'll five-minute rule. The witness will conclude. You, Mr. You want, chairman, this is outrageous. Conclude. Do you have no respect for the rules whatsoever? The witness will conclude. He's two minutes beyond concluding, and you don't let us have that kind of time. You gavel down immediately. You're being grossly unfair. This man had a written we'll statement, and he knew to cut it to five minutes. He couldn't do it. Either we have rules or we don't. The gentleman will suspend. The witness will conclude. Thank you. Well, then in we closing, can keep making noise. It needs noise. to be said that Bill Barr does regularly lie in ways that, that impact official action. Mr. Chairman, there's not order in the room. There's a, a banging. No, there's That's certainly not. The Mr. Chairman, here. would you have Gene Krupa removed? The gentleman, the gentleman, the witness will conclude. That's what you said a while ago, and he didn't conclude. The gentleman will suspend. The witness will conclude. So the la I guess the last thing I want to sum up with, I've said all the rest of this, but the last point I'd like to make is that I think his crowning dishonesty in the face of what he is doing to the Justice Department is the picture that I saw in the New York Times a few weeks ago, a, a portrait of Edward Levy on the wall of his conference room as though the current incumbent has anything but disdain for the beliefs and achievements of his predecessor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I have a uh, parliamentary inquiry. The gentleman will state his parliamentary inquiry. Is it not appropriate for the chair to exercise discretion in extending the five-minute rule as the chair sees fit? It certainly, <laughs> it certainly is appropriate. And is, uh, it a pr is it authorized under the rules of this committee? It certainly is authorized under the rules well, of this well, committee. Well, then uh, cannot the chair call in the sergeant at arms to maintain order when a member of this hmm? panel we'll, is we'll out of order we'll, and we'll, disrupt we'll, we'll the meeting? We'll move on to the next witness.